agree, and that is my experience with it as well. And also, um, you know, again, not speaking from a completely uh, scientific, educated, empirical way, I can only explain what the guardians told me about the heart frequencies because, again, they have confirmed that is a psychotronic mind control technology. They have confirmed, in fact, for the very first time ever, um, if you remember, um, I think that this is a part of the email discussion you and I had. Before I understood that I was going up there to reroute and work with that circuitry and be sort of a handshake hub for that down here, they said that a part of what was going to be propagated into the masses as a part of fear and control was, again, all of us as a part of the human race have seed fears, and one of our seed fears is cataclysm. And the cataclysm fear is something cellularly that our bodies remember because we've blown this place up a few times and we've been involved in this in that kind of uh, cataclysmic disaster. So the, the controllers know this and they will use this as a means of controlling us because we get irrational in that fear without understanding what the source of that fear is really coming from deep in our bodies because we remember the feeling of this. And so um, when I went up there to the East Saudi Ranch there, they said that um, in the next months that the controllers would be working with the cataclysmic program, otherwise known as the Armageddon programs, that would again attempt to bring fear through the fear of death or cataclysm on the eastern seaboards, that they were working from the Alaskan Heart Facility and sending out diagonal circuits that were coming out of Alaska all the way through the borders into Florida and that this was actually attempting to destabilize both the western and eastern seaboard and that also going up and stabilizing that mountain grid area was going to be a part of the environmental reharmonization work because as you and I know, it's all about consciousness. As you mm -hmm. hold the consciousness of peace and allow your body to be a vessel of God consciousness, you can stabilize the grids and harmonize the environment. That is what the God consciousness does. So mm -hmm. in being able to hold that, it's really important that we understand that we don't have to have a fear-based idea about what we think is going to happen or strategizing for that, which is, again, what the controllers want to kind of happen, you know, to get us caught up in that fear. Mm -hmm. So in coming up there and stabilizing those systems, that was a part of the environmental harmonization of the grid works on both the western and the eastern seaboard. Now, at that point, when they talked about the heart frequencies coming out of Alaska, they didn't give me this additional bit of information that they completed with me on December 9th. So, again, the synchronicity is amazing. I have never had the guardians describe the harp frequencies to me until I went to East Eddy Ranch when they described the harp frequencies coming out of Alaska and hitting in the intersect point around the Mount Adams and why Mount Adams was such a major power point and grid point for extraterrestrial activity right there, that this was a major intersection that went all the way diagonally across to the eastern seaboard. So th that is a really um, important spot on our planet, actually, the, the land that you have over there. And so on December 9th, they completed it, and they said that HARP did not create the Norway spiral, what it did was try to prevent it. What HARP mm -hmm. does is it works with the diagonal grid system. So it's like understanding, first of all, that our holographic system, our, the nature of reality, the blueprint of the consciousness fields that create the third dimensional projection that we perceive as physical matter, there is a matrix to this. So if you're thinking of a horizontal grid, a vertical grid, Right at that intersection point, there is a series of white and black hole vortices that spin in counterclockwise and clockwise motion. And this is how our reality literally breathes between the in-breath and out-breath of source or the particle and the antiparticle matter. Our reality is constantly turning on and turning off, turning on, turning off. Our brain 
is programmed to go into a linear sequence so that we perceive we're moving forward in time, but actually we're not. The reality is turning on and turning off, and we perceive ourselves as moving even though that is really the illusion of our consciousness having an experience in a physical form, moving through time. Now, the diagonal grid that crosses in between these intersection points has the capacity to control the rotational spin of those white and black holes. So what it does is it controls the speed, therefore the vibration or the frequency that the matrix can conduct through those particular spin points because it's the spin points that actually control the level of the rotation between electrons and protons, how neutron fields are, are actually created from that, and how new frequencies are actually generated based upon those relationships of the angular rotational spinning of these particular black hole and white hole vortices. Now, HARP, according to the Guardians, can control the diagonal relationship to those spin points and it will try, and that's how it can manifest the different frequency fences, the psychotronics. It's using scalar waves as carrier waves for certain information and they use the diagonal grid relationship to the matrix to shift the frequency or the parameter of the frequency that we can actually perceive within that matrix. Now, I hope that makes sense, but according to them on December 9th, the Hart facility is in Norway over there, and there was actually, uh, you know, an interaction with the Hart facility, but they said that the Hart facility is not responsible for the creation of that phenomena, but it did, uh, but it did interact with that phenomena. That's how they explained mm. it. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I was really hoping that wormhole just was a big blue beam going right to the facility and just short-circuited everything out because, you know, they have done that in the past. There was a massive, massive antenna they're building in a South American country, and I heard it on Coast to Coast. I'm going to track this down. And they interviewed one of the scientists there, and he was just whining and crying because they, they, it was one of the <laughs> biggest antennas that they were going to put together. And this massive blue beam came out of nowhere and hit their, their antenna and just left it in little pieces, entire rubble. And uh, wow. he was really upset because they were all out of a job and he was trying to, you know, cry out for more funding <laughs> to build this thing again. And nobody knew, knew what this was for. In a way, they're saying it was, it was something to search the skies, but uh, in reality, I do believe it was some kind of a, of a weapon, a deep, you know, one of these huge, uh, massive uh, beam beam type weapons that they were going to utilize. You know, at, under the guise of some kind of a uh, of a radio station or, or searching the heavens for life or something. I don't know what they were going to do with it, but uh, I'm, I'm going to track that down and find out. But this did happen in the past, where a, a big blue beam came down from heaven and totally annihilated this massive project they were under. I would okay. love to see that. I've heard, you know, stories, but, you know, I have not actually seen any kind of evidence or pictures or anything about it, even though I have heard it. So, yeah, yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah, I, and I, I, it's really hard to get any more information. Uh, the guy gave all the information. I'm going to search the, the coast to coast, see if I can find out, you know. And tell, it was. I know Art Bell was actually interviewing him. I'm going to send him a letter to see if I can get or an email to find out who that was and, and get that uh, archive up. But uh, I remember hearing very clearly the, the guy talking about what happened. And, and uh, you know, he said, you know, he kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit when he said, well, what was that facility going to be used for? You know, and, and he kind of ch choked up about it, you know. It's, so I think it had multiple multiple purposes. I think it was, it was uh, partially going to be used for... Uh, uh, some kind of uh, scanning the skies or whatever, and it's also had an alternative purpose as well. Well, yeah, I mean, these are exciting times, really. I mean, I, for me, my feeling is, you know, and, and certainly the guidance has been, you know, over the last year, you know, as we are, you know, getting closer to 2012. And again, it's not as if we are putting our 
um, you know, attention on that date because it's happening now. But but mm-hmm. the issue is is that it's like a dial that's being turned up and increasing the volume. You know, the higher the volume goes, the more amplified the polarity gets in our experience down here, and we're. coming from deep in our bodies because we remember the feeling of this. And so um, when I went up there to the Isadi Ranch there, they said that um, in the next month that the controllers would be working with the cataclysmic program, otherwise, and that is my experience with it as well. And also, um, you know, again, not speaking from a completely... Uh, scientific, educated, empirical way. I can only explain what the guardians told me about the harp frequencies because, again, they have confirmed that is a psychotronic mind control technology. They have confirmed, in fact, for the very first time ever, um, if you remember, um, I think that this is a part of the email discussion you and I had. Before I understood that I was going up there to reroute and work with that circuitry and be sort of a handshake hub for that down here, they said that a part of what was going to be propagated into the masses as a part of fear and control was, again, all of us as a part of the human race have seed fears. And one of our seed fears is cataclysm. Mm-hmm. And the cataclysm fear is something cellularly that our bodies remember because we've blown this place up a few times and we've been involved in this in that kind of uh, cataclysmic disaster. So the, the controllers know this and they will use this as a means of controlling us because we get irrational in that fear without understanding what the source of that fear is 